morning to this January uh, 31st, 2018. Yeah, I have a little question for the um, most of the African pastors, and specifically Nigerian pastors. Whenever anyone questions their teachings or their doctrines, before I even get to that, let me just say something first. If I finish my state, my previous statement. Um, when we when we come against or we question your doctrines and your teachings, as a supposedly or so-called mature man of God or woman of God, I'm first of all asking you: don't take it personal because it's not a personal attack on your character or you as an individual. It's not an attack. It is not a personal attack on you. Because sometimes you may say something that doesn't sound right, and if somebody questions you, doesn't mean they're questioning you, your, your personality, your character. I may say something wrong that somebody may disagree and may question it. They're not questioning and saying that I'm a bad person. So you guys need to, first of all, stop taking it so personal. I can't believe you guys claim to be in ministry for 20, 30, 40 years, and because somebody disagree with your statement or disagree with your teachings or have a question about any of your teachings and your doctrines, you're offended. Why are you offended? Even if it's the truth, what is your problem that, that we, we disagree or we have questions? You as a father, if you, you have natural children as a father in the house, you grow up, you have children under your roof, living in your house, and your, all the rules and the regulations you made, your children obey. There come a certain point in their life that they decide to question some of your rules and your laws. As a natural father who gave birth to those children and you love them, what would you do? If any of your natural children you gave birth to, if any of them question any of your teachings, what would you do as a parent? Would you curse them? Would you disown them? Or a father who truly loves his child will begin to wonder and say, wait a second, maybe I should have a talk with my son or my daughter or my child to find out what, what is going on. All of a sudden, they don't want to obey me. All of a sudden, they question my laws and my regulations. You begin to sit and have a conversation with your child. Or you, if you are a true man of God, woman of God, you begin to pray and say, maybe my child is hanging out with some wrong friends. Or take it to the Lord in prayer. Or have a conversation with your child to ask them what's going on. You wouldn't jump and start cursing them. That's number one. Number two, you want to tell me as you were raising your children, if your children are grown, you want to tell me every laws and every rules and regulation you put down in your house, your kids or your wife, they obey everything? Then you rent your house like a cult. That means you are the cult leader and whatever you say is final and no one should question you. Are you raising robots? Are your children robots? So the same thing applies to us because you claim that you are spiritual fathers. So you want to so much hold on to the spiritual father titles. So as a father, you're not behaving properly as a father because a father will never curse their children because the children question any of their laws. So we are questioning some of your teachings and your doctrines and the only resolution you have is to mount your pope in an issue of curse. That is wrong. That's not what fathers do. So you're not a father anymore, if ever you were. My next issue is you guys mount to the pulpit and you begin to release curses. You know your curses dropping to the ground unfulfilled, right? You know God's not going to fulfill any of your curses. He may collect them in a bowl. And when he gets tired of your nonsense, he will pull that bowl over your head. Because you have no right to curse the bride of Christ. You didn't die for her. You didn't lay down your life for the bride of Christ on Calvary. So what right have you? Do you lay in your bed at night? Awake, worried and groaning and traveling and crying and praying and interceding over the day. The, over the cares and the burdens and the worries of your bride, the church, the bride of Christ, the people who call you spiritual father and mother and daddy and mommy. Do you take their burdens to the Lord in prayer day and night, praying and fasting on their behalf? When you lay in your bed, is the, are you worrying over the problem or praying over the problem? Or is it your own natural children you, you're concerned about? But you say you have spiritual mother and mommy and daddy. Stop calling people mommy and daddy. They don't take your name you, when they lay in the bed. And not, they don't think about you. They don't, they don't, they don't worry about you. You are not on their mind. So you don't, they don't even know your names. And yet you call them mommy and daddy. They don't know your name. My last issue is, listen, all you guys who love to quote to, especially, it's mostly African churches, African pastors, Nigerians specifically, but all, it's all over Africa now. That whenever somebody disagrees with a pastor or question them or question their doctrine, the first thing they want to do is mount to the pulpit and issue a curse. Okay, well, please tell me, what is the difference? You go to a witch doctor in his shrine, and he released curse on your enemies. You go to the church, the pastor released a curse on your enemies. So what's the difference now? 
So it's no longer churches. You call them churches. But thus says the laws. Those are no longer churches. Those are shrines. Only shrines. Only which doctor issued curses. So all the pastors and all the churches in Africa left the right just issuing curses. So those are no longer churches. Those are shrines. Because that's what witch doctors do in their shrines. So the, the African pastors and the Nigerian pastors, you have you are about to put the witch doctors out of business in your in your countries in Nigeria and so the continent of Africa. You're about to put the witch doctors out of business because you issue more curses from your shrine you call church. More than witch doctors in Africa uh, in, in the in the shrine do. I mean curses are just how can somebody say I'm gonna, I'm sitting here thinking with a second? That's the only defense. Anyone come against their, their tithes, their doctrines of tithes and, and sowing and reaping and their fall down and die prayer. You can't question anything they say because they are gods, correct? You can't question anything anybody say these days. They're going to mount to their shrine. They, they go to their shrine. I, don't, I can't call those churches anymore. Because what's the difference between your church and a witch doctor shrine? What does the witch doctor do in his shrine? He issues curses. What does the pastors in Africa today do in their churches? They issue curses. So can I call that church? Those are shrines. That thing you call pulpit is no longer a pulpit. It's a demonic altar. All day they issue curses. This is wrong. And all day you pray and fall down and die. There's a witch in your village. She should die. There's a witch somewhere. All day you fall down and die prayer. It is what causing the death to be over Africa today. The, the, the uh, Boko Haram terrorizing the people. The Fulani herdsmen killing and slaughtering animals and slaughtering people. They're burning down churches and burning down Christians. Why is there a death decree over Nigeria? Because Nigerians have prayed for die and die prayer. So all this for die and die, 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 all your die, die, die prayer, you have invoked and released the spirit of death over your country, Nigeria, and even over the continent of Africa. So now you need to cancel those for die and die prayer and begin to pray, rise up and live in Jesus' name. Replace that. All day you pray for somebody to die and this person should die. Oh, to suffer not a wish to live. But Jesus, the Bible says, suffer not a wish to live. But, but what did Jesus say to do with your enemies? Bless those who curse you. Those who despite, despitefully use you. Love them, bless them, pray for them. You say, no, they, they, the evil, wicked people in Africa, they're evil hearted. They say they're men of God. They have taught you to be wicked and evil. So you, you pray against your enemies to fall down and die. Have you stopped to consider that as you gather in your church, let's say your church is redeemed, and you're having your Friday night vigil, and you're praying for your enemy to fall down and die. Somebody else is in Olukoya church that may consider you an enemy, and they are also praying for the enemy to fall down and die. So which one of you will fall down first and die? Do you not think? Or you believe in your heart that you, you are nobody's enemies, right? I mean, can you stop and think for a moment? Okay, if you believe this fall down and die doctrines is correct, have you stopped to wonder, if there, is there a possibility that somebody may consider you an enemy? Even though in your heart you may have no clue, because the Bible said the heart of a man is desperately wicked. You may have no clue in your heart that that person consider you an enemy. But they're going to their prayer to pray for, they're going to their church to pray for that, for you to fall down and die. Whereas you go into a, a different church to pray for maybe them or somebody else to fall down and die. Or what if you consider each other enemies without even each other knowing? Because the Bible also says your enemies are the members of your household. You can be best friend with somebody, BFF. In America, we'll say BFF, best friend forever. You can be somebody's best friend, and but you don't know the evil in their heart unless God revealed it to you. So what if you are somebody's enemy and they're praying against you? Have you stopped to wonder? Or you think you're the only one who have an enemy? That your heart is so pure and your heart is so right and your heart is so perfect that it's not possible for anybody to slightly consider you an enemy, enemy for them to pray against you. So you're the only one who are so good that everybody's turning against you. Let's stop and wonder. This four die and die prayer is wicked and it's evil. Because as you are praying for your enemy to die, what if somebody else consider you an enemy and they are praying for you to fall down and die? Which one of you should die first? This is wickedness and this is evil. This is what's killing Africa. This is what caused the, the death, the poverty. All those prayers have nothing but released and invoked the spirit of death and wickedness and poverty over the Africa. There's a death decree over the continent of Africa. And they were sparked by these witch doctors who call themselves men of God. You're no longer men of God. How can a so-called father in the Lord, a man who called himself a father in the Lord, and his, one of his child or his children rebel against him or have a question, they may call it rebellion, but they have a question, or they question some of their doctrines and their teachings. And your only, your only resolution 
Your only response is to mount to your shrine, you call church, it's to issue a, issue a curse. Does that even make sense? Do you guys even stop and think for a moment and say, wait a second, that's not a reaction of a father? If your own natural child rebel against you, or your own natural child questions some of your teachings or some of your laws over your, over your roof in your house, what would you do as a loving father? Would you curse them? Would you cut them off and write them off? If you love that child, what would you do? Wouldn't you sit there and have a talk with them and find out what's going on, what, what, what went wrong somewhere, that all of a sudden they have a change of mind, they, they no longer want to listen to you and your, and your teachings or your rules, they don't want to abide by your rules, wouldn't you ask them first, try to find out what the solution, get to the bottom, and they, they continue, then you, you, I mean, really, but you guys say you are fathers, you say you are mothers, what do mothers do? You know, if, if, you, if you had a heart of God, and any of your children rebel against, what would you do? Do we not live, do we not rebel against God's law? Do we not break his laws every day? Or are you claiming that because you're following the law and you've been with God for the 30, working with God for 30 years, so you don't break any of his laws? Okay, God is the father of all of us. So within 24 hours, are you telling me, Mr. Man of God, woman of God, within 24 hours, are you, you expect me to believe in that 24 hours? You never broke any of God's laws. Whether naively, innocently, purposely, you never broke any of God's laws, either in rebellion, disobedience. You never, within 24 hours. Of course, we all do. You break God's laws. Every, so, should God curse you too? All you spirit, so called spiritual father all over Africa, Nigeria, that because somebody questioned your doctrines and your teaching, you come to your pulpit to curse them. So, if God also, because we know God is the true God of all, right? The God of the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God I'm talking about. Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's the God I'm talking about. So what if he looks down and see that you have broken some of his laws? Should he also issue a curse on you? Should God curse you? And think about that. Should God come down and curse you or issue a curse to you because you broke some of his laws or because you question? So God, God also questions some of your teachings. So you're going to curse God or should God curse you? You know, this cursing, having had enough, God, I've had enough of this cursing. And all your curses will drop to the ground. But God will send an angel to send a bowl of ink to collect all your curses. And he's going to give you a long, because he's long suffering, give you a long time to repent. And if you don't, God will turn that bowl of curses that you all have issued. And he will grant you the privilege because he will pour it over your head. Yes. You have no right to curse anybody, especially if you claim to be a father or a mother in the law. You won't curse your own child because they rebel against you. You won't put a curse on your own child. You will command your child. You, you will suffer. You will wicked. You will be part. You will, would you curse your own child because they rebel against you or they question some of your laws in your house? So what right have you to curse somebody who you didn't, you didn't even give birth to? Number one, number two, somebody who you didn't die for? You didn't shed your blood on Calvary? Do you bear on your back the markings and the sufferings because of the church? So why are you cursing them? The one who died for his bride, he's coming for her. God aims to fight for his bride. And whoever stands between the way of God and his bride, he will pull you out. Because he's a jealous God. He is jealous. When, a veil, when Jesus died, a veil was parted. All of us have direct access to Jesus. I don't have to go to spiritual father, spiritual mother, daddy geo, father geo, whatever geo. I don't. If I have any issue, I have direct access to go to God for myself. The blood of Jesus grant me access to stand before the throne of God and ask me on my own. I don't have to go through any man because you have made yourself a middleman between God and his bride. He's going to rise up from his throne and take you out of the way. Anyone or anything that stands between God and his bride, he's taking you out of the way. Period. I have a final word for all of you so-called spiritual giants out there, especially in Africa, but this message for everybody all over the world. You consider yourself a spiritual giant because you have a recognizable household name, correct? You can draw the crowd and the people know your name and they talk about how you're a big man of God. No problem. The Lord said, all you so-called spiritual giants all over the world, God is raising up his David to take you down. Bless you.